Well, good morning. A little late for some reason. There was something going on last night that people seem to be talking about. And you're right, I have done my hair. That's... So we're in the final. Hallelujah. Hasn't taken long to make one, has it? And we put all our faith in 11 men and a wing bag. But less about the MP, some politicians. Let's carry on with a morning of praising the Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And so we say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our first reading. Readings from Genesis 44. Lots of different verses. Then Judah stepped forward and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say just one word to you. Please do not be angry with me, even though you are as powerful as Pharaoh himself. My Lord, previously you asked us, your servants, do you have a father or a brother? And we responded, Yes, my Lord, we have a father who is an old man and his youngest son is a child of his old age. His full brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him very much. And you said to us, bring him here so I can see him with my own eyes. But you told us, unless your youngest brother comes with you, you will never see my face again. So we returned to your servant, our father, and told him what you had said. Later when he said, go back again and buy us more food. We replied, we can't go unless you let our youngest brother go with us. We'll never get to see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then my father said to us, as you know, my wife had two sons and one of them went away and never returned. Doubtless he was torn to pieces by some wild animal. I have never seen him since. Now, if you take his brother away from me, 
and any harm comes to him, you will see, send this grieving white-haired man to his grave. Joseph could stand it no longer. There were many people in the room and he said to his, his attendants, out, all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realise that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here, ahead of you, to preserve your lives. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. Don't take any money in your money belts, no gold, silver or even copper coins. Don't carry a traveller's bag with a change of clothes or sandals or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve to be fed. Whenever you enter a city or a village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If it is not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. I tell you the truth, wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, we thank you for your word, for Jesus, your word made flesh. Touch us now, we pray, by your spirit, that we may understand all that is within and before us. Amen. Well, what amazing readings. Could you imagine you've been taken, kicked, chucked in a cistern, flogged to a bunch of guys, sent off to a foreign country as a slave with shackles of iron, it says in the Old Testament. And there you are. You have a few dreams. You get stuck in a lion's den. You have a pretty interesting time. And then there's a famine and your brothers turn up. You know the ones. They're the ones who gave you the kick in and stuck you in the cistern and and sold you. What would you do? I've seen so many people over the years who have had a NAF manager, a cruel foreman or shift person, and when they get to be in charge, do they pay for it? They make them pay. Now's the time to get my own back. But that's not how God does it. He doesn't get them to come in and, like the comedy sketch that used to talk about, the rich relative from the West Midlands who say, well, I'm much richer than you, and parade it and humble and humiliate the other. Actually, Joseph does what God does. Keeps no record of wrongs, but shares, cares, loves, forgives. You know, that's what the church needs. We've had a big week this last week talking about limiting factors we have three limiting factors me and the rest of the clergy because it says stipends the money they pay us it says the buildings which are a millstone around our neck our grade nothing listed St Francis our early demolition designed church isn't a millstone it's a place of facilitation of blessing of making things happen, I'm glad to say, but buildings are a pain. 
And the last one is teaching us, training us, because we don't need all the training we get. It costs a lot. And as long as you know to sing good old England and football's coming home with the rest of the crowd and look like them, then church will be all right anyway. Who needs all this theology? Actually, we don't need theology. Just let me tell you this. I've got people, they read a book by somebody and then they write a book about the person who wrote the book and they get their doctorate and their little floppy hats and they tell us how they are the hope for the church. They're no hope for the church. They're self-serving, most of them. I love Richard Balkum. And I think he's great, but at the end of the day, academia feeds ourselves. It's pointless unless it actually builds the church. So sorry, mates, all my friends out there with lots of postgrad floppy hat things and stuff. Great, the blessing's all yours. But you know, the church is built, and as we are panicking, because we have no money, as we're looking for the laity to do, what do we need to know? The church is built, first of all, on love, on loving service, on loving forgiveness, on being like Joseph. He doesn't give them a tough time, but he provides the food and the stuff that they need. He provides the forgiveness they don't expect. And so often they keep saying, let's test him. He's going to kill us later. He's conning us. No, he's not. He's showing the same love that the God who made us, who planned to reconcile us after our fall through taking flesh, shows in Jesus. So what do we need to do today? Do we need to worry about the buildings? Do we need to worry about the money we pay our clergy? And of course, how we educate them. 50 to 70,000 pounds to educate someone. Mine costs nearly three pound 50 and it shows. What do we need? We need that second reading. We need people who understand how much they've been given, how much God has given them to go out and to heal the sick, to touch the poor, to cure. What healing do we do? We're okay with the headache probably, but we don't do the stuff. We don't need a new bunch of people to go and do doctorates, to a new theology of church planting, 10,000 new churches. We're going to tell you how to do it. We don't need our bishops with MBAs. In fact, do we need our bishops? Not a lot of them. If we're going to lose clergy at the bottom, we need to lose a lot more at the top because they cost more. And what do they do? <sighs> Absolutely nothing, some of them. They're figureheads. They're great blokes and girls. I love some of them. I despise some of them. And I'm sorry, Lord, that's true. Because they have their plans, but nothing comes to fruition. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about that last reading. I'm going back to it. <sighs> Go and announce them the kingdom of heaven is near. That's what we need to do to build the church. Build the church with the kingdom of heaven. I've got so many people who love big buildings and love this, love that. That's not the kingdom of heaven. It's a museum. It's where God used to live very often. Go and preach the Christ, the gospel of peace. We have lost our way. The early church was Jewish and then it decided it wasn't Jewish and we didn't like the Jews. The early church was about welcoming all. It was accepting, it was caring, it was loving, it was forgiving. It was like Joseph, no matter what was being done to you, you gave in love. The early church was a place where God's grace and reconciliation, where the nothing you've been, nothing you've seen, nothing you've done, nothing you're going to do, separates you from God's love, was made real. That's what that was about. And then we became the Holy Roman Empire. We got rid of the Jews, because the Jews killed Jesus. We became a political body. We had gold, we had power, we had authority, we still do. We drones on the bottom and I joined to be a foot soldier and that's my only ambition and I've maintained my ambition, thanks be to God. The foot soldiers should be going out and doing the stuff, but we're not, we're so frightened. We're trying just to keep what we've got going. We don't do missional, we don't preach the gospel, we don't live the gospel. We don't go out and stop people in the street and say, you look sad, can I pray for you? What's going on when I do that? A few people have got used to me doing that now. 
But when I do that, they think you're mad. But you know what? Not drunk, not mad, filled with the Spirit. If you want to build the church, if you want to see your piddling expression of church survive, stop sitting there with all your old congregation getting older and wanting it the way it was. And change. Don't become like the world. Don't accept every lifestyle, every attitude and say, oh, as long as you come, we don't care. Jesus just wants you to be happy. Jesus wants you to be honest, open, filled with integrity, saved and living according to the commandments of God. Don't tell people things that are wrong or right to get them in. Don't try to look like the world. Don't put on concerts. Don't have a cinema screen and show films five nights a week. Don't believe that if they come into your building, you've done anything other than being a venue manager. We need to do what the words of Matthew say. We need to do what the words of Jesus say. Unless we're missional, we're dead. Cling to your money, count them in your little counting rooms. Look at your diminishing, wrinkly old congregation. And I love wrinkly old congregations. Good. Hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> I may get out, there's a side door. I'm a wrinkly, I'm 68. Churches die old, churches grow young. Churches grow through the love of God made flesh in Jesus, being made flesh in the communities that we are in. Limiting factors, building stipends, and how we get trained. Well, limiting factor is that we are not doing the stuff. We are not finding a person of peace in our community and getting the introductions. We are not going out and spending the time. We don't go the extra mile as clergy. And the bishops, as long as they have a quiet life, don't give a monkeys what really seems to be going on in their parishes and their churches. As long as all looks well, everything goes to head in a handcart. Guys, today I'm being a pain. Today I'm being a real, what my friend used to call a Peter, which I hope he means was the rock, not P-I-T-A, I fear it may be. But you know, Unless we do what Jesus commands us, unless we go and make disciples, teaching them to obey the commandments, unless we get them to repent, believe, be baptised, receive the Holy Spirit, and then do that to someone else, the church is doomed. But the good news is there's an awful lot of great potential bingo halls and carpet warehouses out there waiting to be sold. Your choice. Going to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, or are you just going to say, oh, we sit here until the last person dies? My Redeemer lives, and I know I shall see him at last in the flesh. But before I do, I'm going to make sure I take a few with me. What about you? Father, we thank you for your words this morning of the love of the grace that Joseph shows. We thank you for the words of Matthew that talk about going out, doing the stuff, expecting no reward, but giving as freely as we have received. Father, I pray for the academics. May they have a nice time wherever they are and may they do as well as they think they're doing. I pray for the bishops. May they actually stop thinking about new theologies and silly, foolish words. May they start thinking about the people at the coalface and may they stand with them. May they take metaphorically their tops off and come to the coalface and make Christ known in all that they do also. And may your ministers, may most of all your laity, for all a laity, bishops, archdemons, clergy, we're laos like the rest of the church. We are the people of God. May we live up to that wonderful label and transform the world around us because of a God made flesh who dies for us. We ask this in your most glorious name. Father God, bless us, we pray. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. 
We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we come before you this morning, first and foremost, we reflect upon the example of Joseph. And Lord, we pray for those who may have wronged us. We pray for those for whom we may feel in our hearts a sense of disappointment, anger, resentment. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to let go of those emotions and replace them instead with the knowledge of your grace and your forgiveness, understanding that we have received them in abundance, but not just for our own sakes. Everything we receive from you, we receive for a purpose, and that purpose is to share it with others. So, Lord, may we be the vehicles of your grace and your forgiveness in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray also for your church of which we are part that we would listen to the words of Jesus that we would take them to heart we wouldn't find excuses for why we can't do what we have been told plainly to do it's never been easy but that's no reason not to do it. So Lord, may we open our hearts, may we open our minds, may we open our homes safely, wisely, but generously. May we lay aside the things of this world that hold us back, the need to provide for ourselves, the need to hold on to material wealth, the need to make ourselves and those who are close to us comfortable and ensure that we are safe and not think about others. Lord, may our lives be so transformed by your gospel that we are living witnesses, that we make you know in our words, in our actions, in the things we do and the things we don't do, in the things that we make our priorities, in the way that we conduct ourselves, in our businesses, in our relationships, in our churches, looking not to build our own small corner of your kingdom, looking not to hold on to the past and the things that make us comfortable, but to be willing to move into the uncomfortable for your sake and for the sake of those who have yet to hear your gospel. May that be our rallying cry, may that be our motivation from the archbishops down to the most lowly person. For all are cherished in your kingdom, all are exalted, all are promised a place 
in eternity with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our world, for a world that so obviously needs the church to be active, needs the church to be showing a different way. We pray for the president of Haiti, for his family, for his wife, for that country, as his life has been taken in an assassination. We pray for the Dutch crime investigator who has also been attacked in the street and left fighting for his life. We pray for the lives in our own country that have been irrevocably changed because of knife crime. The young lives that have been taken, not just those that have lost their lives, but those who have taken life and in doing so lost their own lives. Lord, we pray for all who are affected by violence. We pray for a world which so often turns to violence rather than to dialogue, rather than to finding compromise or standing firm, but honestly with integrity. A world where we pull others down in order to cover up our own wrongdoing. So Lord, we pray for a change, a change in our communities, in the in the lives of our young people who are drawn into crime, who are drawn into violence. A change in the laws and in the way that we are governed that puts so many people in a place of disadvantage so they feel they have no option but to follow those paths of gang culture we pray for our politicians many of whom come from well off backgrounds and perhaps have no real understanding of the challenges that face so many people who live in our country we pray that their eyes would be opened that their minds would be changed. And Lord, we pray for them as they carry the burden of leadership. That they would do it on behalf of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for our loved ones. But we pray also for those who are not our nearest and dearest, but we may have heard about those we know who are maybe suffering, the people down the street, the friends, the neighbours, the friends of friends, the people who come into our country driven from their own homes by war, by famine, by violence and persecution. Lord, that we would learn to love them as you love us and to pray for them as we pray for our own families. Not holding anyone above another. 
of bringing all needs to you equally. So as we pray for our loved ones and their needs, Lord, teach us to pray for those we don't know, those we pass on the street, those we may even hold in contempt, to pray for them as we pray for our own families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we've prayed for victims of violence, we also pray for those who have lost lives in accident, in natural disaster. We pray as the rescue operation in Miami becomes a recovery operation, as it's accepted that there will be no more survivors. We pray for those who have lost their loved ones in this disaster and in other disasters. Those who have lost loved ones to illness, to medical neglect or other forms of neglect. To the thoughtlessness that often leads to death or damage. Lord, we pray for all who grieve today. For those who grieve the loss of life, for those who grieve the loss of love, for those who grieve the loss of jobs and security, for those who grieve the life that once was but is no more because of illness. Lord, for all who carry in their hearts that pain of loss. We pray for your comfort. We pray that they may be reconciled and comforted as Jacob was when he was reunited with Joseph. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. So we offer one another a sign of peace here. And wherever you are, may God be with you. Whenever you see this, whenever you watch, whether you're watching us now or later, God's love, God's peace is with you. So may you know it always. And because of that, we can say with confidence that the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. So lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, our great High Priest. For he offered himself to you as a lamb without blemish, the acceptable gift that gives you perfect peace. For he is your living word. Through him you've created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you've freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you've sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared, we were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Body and blood of Christ given for you. Amen. 
Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> okay. Well, there's an interesting thing. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Technology has conspired. Grant, O oh Lord, we beseech you that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may be may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So thank you for being with us. Have a good day. Be blessed. Remember, if we can do anything, we're here, we're family, we're one. We stand together. Have a great day. Bye.